Uh, Maya, you've recently published a paper together with your colleagues um, where you identify seven principles or guidelines for enhancing the resilience of ecosystem services. Now, what are these principles? Well, they're basically key properties of a social ecological system, like um, its diversity or connectivity, or key attributes of the governance system mm -hmm. um, that have shown to be relevant um, for the resilience of ecosystem services. Mm -hmm. And with that, we mean the capacity of a social ecological system to actually sustain ecosystem services or a desired set of ecosystem mm -hmm. services um, in the face of disturbance or some ongoing change. Mm -hmm. And how did you arrive at the principles? Well, there's been more and more studies that look at um, what actually determines the, the resilience of a social ecological system. And um, so we, we reviewed those studies mm -hmm. and then kind of organized a, a mock court mm -hmm. workshop where we put those principles to um, debate mm -hmm. and debated them with um, some leading also experts in the field and also complemented that with a survey with um, some of the leading experts in order to come up with this list of seven mm -hmm. principles that we kind of consider as a, a first kind of preliminary list of core principles. Mm -hmm. And how do you think the principles can be useful? Like, How can they be applied? Well, the resilience of ecosystem services is really policy relevant as it mm -hmm. kind of underpins the, the both the social and the economic well-being of mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. um, so with those uh, principles we kind of want to provide um, guidance and, and how to manage or govern um, systems in order to come up with, or in order to enhance um, their resilience, mm -hmm. the resilience of the ecosystem services. Mm -hmm. um, for example, uh, with respect to learning, mm -hmm. um, in the, we, st we studied many different case studies and actually tried to come up, or to, to define the evidence there is, mm -hmm. the empirical evidence there is for those principles. Mm -hmm. And in the Tisa River, for example, mm -hmm. um, there was a learning process that actually led to um, a paradigm shift from kind of fighting the river mm -hmm. towards more living with the river. Mm -hmm. But of course, these principles don't act um, on their own, mm -hmm. but they're all kind of interdependent and interact. So um, participation, for example, is important to build the trust and the social capital you need in order to really achieve learning mm. or also to, to be able to um, have polycentric management. Mm. And it's also important to stress that they're not panaceas mm. in itself, but that um, they, they're, they're not always universally beneficial. There mm. can be situations, and that really depends on the context, mm. where such a principle might even lead to a decrease of resilience, mm. or where that decrease of resilience is, is even wanted. Mm. For example, if feedbacks keep the system in a trap, mm. and you want to decrease the resilience mm. in order to be able to facilitate that or to, to, to manage to um, have the system kind of change into mm. a new Mm -hmm. in a new state that would be much more desirable. Mm -hmm.